Okay, these next couple videos are going to be about macromolecules. I just wanted to start by reviewing the objectives. Now we're going to have a number of different kinds of macromolecules that we talk about. Um, and they tend to be what are referred to as polymers. So big molecules made out of repeating units. For each of these macromolecules, you want to know the monomers that they are made up of and then be able to identify a picture of either the monomer or the polymer and then know the functions that each different macromolecule performs for the body. So a macromolecule is just any molecule that is really big and there's no firm dividing line between a small molecule such as this water molecule here or this great big protein. And I don't know if these two are to scale, I just copied and pasted them into a PowerPoint. So you would get a sense of molecules can be very small or either very large, and macromolecules tend to be very large. Uh, so we're going to talk about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids in that order. So first up is carbohydrates. They are called carbohydrates because they consist of carbon oxygen and hydrogen. Um, you'll see that lipids have the same elemental composition or the same elements in them. They just put together differently. So the monomers of carbohydrates are referred to as sugars or monosaccharides. They all end in OSE like glucose or fructose. I think I forget whether fructose is a monosaccharide or a disaccharide. Uh, the monomer that we care about is glucose. It looks like this. In our class, whenever you see something that looks like a green stop sign or a single ring structure like this, that is a single sugar, which we are going to refer to as glucose. Um, and glucose is the molecule that your cells break down to make energy. So you can think of it as like the gasoline that you put in your gas tank. It is highly refined, cleanly burning, easy to process energy. So here are some other monosaccharides. Hey, I was right. There's fructose monosaccharide. Uh, if you put two monosaccharides together, you can make a disaccharide. Uh, we will not be really talking about disaccharides. You should just know that they exist. Then we have polysaccharides, which is a long chain of monosaccharides. And there's really only one kind of polysaccharide that we care about. It looks like this. It is a long chain or branching chain, I should say, of glucose, and it is called glycogen. Um, so glycogen is what your body uses, as it says here in red, for your short term energy storage. Um, so glucose is the fuel that you are burning. You can kind of think of glucose as the fuel that's actually in your engine. Uh, and glycogen is perhaps what's in your gas tank. It's what you've got for the day. That then brings us to lipids. Uh, there are three different kinds of lipids, oils, cholesterol, and phospholipids. They're each going to have different structure, and they're each going to have different functions. So there isn't one structure, one function for lipids. Um, what holds them all together in the same group is that they all don't mix with water. So they're referred to as hydrophobic or insoluble. So first up are the fats, oils, or what are commonly known as triglycerides. Uh, they're called triglycerides because the structure is they have a glycerol head group with three fatty acid tails, um, sometimes referred to as hydrocarbon tails. Uh, so there is the glycerol head group, and then you add to that three tails, and you get a triglyceride. Um, so this is the fat that you find in beef or pork or olive oil or canola oil. Um, if it's uh, animal or plant fat, this is what it looks like. Uh, the function or the primary function of regular triglycerides is long-term energy storage. Uh, you can see that they can be used for other things, um, absorbing lipid-soluble vitamins, keeping you warm, um, and shock absorption. Your body 
uses fat here and there to pack around organs like packing peanuts. Um, but primarily we think of your body's fat content or triglyceride content as your long-term energy storage. Uh, so you can think of lipids as sort of like oil that's in the ground and it has to be refined into something like gasoline or glucose. Um, and then that's the energy that your body likes to burn. Um, the next lipid is called a phospholipid. Um, so it is very much like the triglycerides, except for instead of the third fatty acid, you have a phosphate head group. Um, so there is your glycerol, and then two fatty acids. And then instead of the third fatty acid down here, you have this phosphate containing head group. What you want to notice about it, if you look there and there, is that the phosphate head group is actually polar. It has some charges on it. And you're going to see later that that comes in really handy when you're trying to construct a cell membrane. So the function of phospholipids in your body is that they are the major structural ingredient in the formation of your cell membranes. And I'm going to go back one slide here. Um, so you'll either see them like this or a lot of times when they're drawn in cartoon form it's just this little ball for the phosphate head with the two fatty acid tails on it and that's the way they're represented here. Our third lipid is cholesterol. Um, cholesterol is a little bit different than the other lipids. Um, it's got this complicated looking ring structure. Um, what you need to know about the rings is that they're very good at sharing electrons and if you share electrons in a ring like that then you are very nonpolar. So cholesterol tends to be very hydrophobic, doesn't mix well with water at all, which for you means, or for most of us, it means it doesn't float around easily in your bloodstream and if you have too much of it, it likes to get stuck to the side of a blood vessel. Uh, so there are a couple of functions for cholesterol too. One is that it serves as the precursor for your steroid hormones. Um, so estrogen, testosterone, cortisol are all steroid hormones. In the endocrine glands or the hormone glands that make these hormones, the enzymes start out with cholesterol. Um, and then they modify the cholesterol by adding bits or snipping bits off to make all of these different steroid hormones. Um, so that's the, the primary or the big physiological structure for cholesterol. And then it also serves as a minor component of cell membranes. Uh, so if you look in this membrane here, all of these little yellow ring structures, these are cholesterol molecules. And your cell can add or remove cholesterol if it wants to change the fluidity or the rigidity of the membrane. I'm going to stop there and keep all of these videos short. Um, so there will be a couple more following this about proteins and what's the other one? Nucleic acids.